welcome back to my channel so I have some hair from hair and beauty they did send me some bundles okay this is their straight hair the longest length I have I believe is a 26 inch and I have three bundles and a closure so I'm going to show you guys how exactly I make my wigs on a sewing machine with the closure so I've showed you guys and gave you a detailed tutorial on how I do it with a frontal okay so you want to take all of that information of how to thread your machine and everything like that you want to take that video which I will leave in the i cards above at the end of this video and in the description box okay so I will say watch that video first and if you don't know how to measure your head watch my initial my first first ever how to make a wig video um, and I'll leave that in the description box as well for you to so you can refer to that all right so this is going to be how I make a closure wig it's going to be simple and sweet you want to make sure you put pull your closure a half inch or inch above the actual uh, free edge of your dome cap all right that is because it's going to give you the most natural look when it comes to applying your closure or your wig onto your head all right because you definitely want to end up cutting those little side tabs the seam tabs of the closure off so and it looks better that way all right so make sure your closure is flush to your cap and you want to outline it and uh, you're outlining it because i'm going to remove the closure i just feel like it, i work better and faster when the closure is not adhered to the wig first um i just feel like you know i just i can just move quicker okay so as of right now it takes me about 15 minutes to make a sewing machine wig and I will never go back to a handmade wig ever again it's just super fast super easy and especially when I have a lot of wigs to make for customers or for YouTube okay so yes so because I have three bundles and the bundles weren't they didn't look that big I decided that I was going to single track my webs onto my my cap all right so the first bundle I doubled and that's like three rows all right it just depends on how big your bundles are um, be, but because I have longer lengths the bundles are not gonna be like it's not gonna take a, a, a lot of a rows on the wig all right so I would double the first bundle and then I single track the rest and I literally only had a little piece of hair left all right so um, so a lot of you guys get antsy when I say the guidelines is just a guideline. You do not have to stick to how many rows I'm doing because then you, different manufacturers have different amount of hair in their bundles. The shorter length your hair is, the more wefts you get. The, long, the longer length your hair, the shorter wefts you get. So it's just up to you to just use general like a, a guesstimate as to how many rows you should have. So I would say if you would ask me, if you have four bundles, then you would want definitely want to double with your bundles and then sew it onto your tracks. I mean onto your cap, okay? If you have three bundles, you can either sew them single tracked without doubling doubling them, or you could double one bundle, which is your last bundle, okay, and then you could single track the rest of them. Or you could single track the entire bundle, alright? If you have two bundles just go ahead and single track that because it makes no sense for you to double track two bundles because it's really going to look super super gappy all right so you just you just have to think about it that way the more hair you add it on to your wig the more you're going to double your tracks okay simple and let me say if you have four bundles and you want to single track all of those tracks onto that um wig cap that is fine but i am going to let you know your wig is not going to have as much stretch because as you see there's gap there's spacage in between each track so that space is letting my wig still expand all right the more tracks you put on there the harder it's going to be for your wig to expand i hope that makes sense so let's talk about sewing so i'm gonna hold the two strings in the back i'm gonna make sure that my wefts and my cap are aligned with my guidelines all right um, it's just like driving, so you just want to make sure that your le your west and your guidelines lines are on top of each other, and you want to put both of them under your presser foot. All right, there's going to be an elastic band in your cap. All right, you want to stitch all the way to the ending of the elastic band before the actual thin part of the cap starts. 
all right and once you do that you want to stop and you want to press your backwards button which right is right there in front of my machine right there yes press that down it's going to go backwards and you want to go back to the beginning of the elastic band and then you want to come back that's how you lock in your stitch you definitely want to lock in your stitch because if you don't your stitch will your track will slip out you want to make sure that that thing is locked you want to back foot yes go front go back go front sew it on down and everything like that all right so the reason why I don't use pins to keep my my tracks in place on my cap is because of the fact that I want to make sure that I can maneuver my cap and my cap is flat and it's not getting sewn on top of each other because it's easy for it's very easy for you to sew the wrong way on the sewing machine and your cap gets stitched to each other the wrong way and it's a it's a headache trying to unstitch that like getting some scissors or a seam ripper and trying to take that apart all right so like it's just it's just a headache and I like to work headache free um, if I have to stop and like you know straighten my track up or straighten my cap up and making sure everything is you know smooth and flat while I'm sewing then I will just go ahead and do that all right so yes so as you see I am just sewing and she is neat like you definitely want your inside of your cap to look like this you know, it's going to get you, You can, it's, it's going to take some time for you to get comfortable with your sewing machine, but you're going to get there, though. You're definitely going to get there. Um, just take your time. Don't have high expectations to move as fast as I am, because there's people that make sewing machine wigs faster than 15 minutes. Take your time. Put on a bomb movie. Turn on some bomb music. Just vibe out. This is very therapeutic, especially when you're doing it. But like I said in my last sewing machine video when I was showing you guys how to make a frontal, I will highly suggest if this is your first time doing this um, to do it on synthetic hair. Um, practice on synthetic hair. Do not mess up your expensive bundles trying to figure out how to use a sewing machine, okay? Or if you have old bundles, then that's cool. But practice on some synthetic hair because I know my first wig was horrible like it was horrible I gave it to my mom and she wore it she was proud to wear it but it was bad but like I it, it took some time for me to get this neat all right and another reason why I make sure that my cap and my bundle my, my wefts are super neat is because the hair could get into the machine and it could just be a headache trying to clean it out all right so this is what the wig looks like I'm gonna cut off all the excess string that's underneath the wig because you will have that um, and then this is just what the cap looks like and she's ready for the closure like I'm gonna show you right here I'm gonna put the wig on without the closure and like this would be a U part right but if I was to sell a U part I would make sure that the U area where there's no hair is is a little bit smaller because I wouldn't want somebody to leave that much of my hair out so I will make sure it was smaller but that's the perfect size for your closure because you, we measured it out so let's put the closure on so I'm gonna set the closure on and I'm gonna pin it back down and I'm gonna hand stitch it do a couple of hand stitches um, just so I could put the closure and the wig through the sewing machine now um, Some some people don't do this some people could just sew it But I like to be precise so I don't mind taking the time out to hand stitch that specific area And then going over it with my sewing machine Like I said, I'm not as detailed in this video because I just feel like I was super detailed in my first sewing machine video and my first wig making video ever. So if you are just a newbie and you just want to know where to start, like I said, I will link both of those videos. Well, I will link all of my how to make a wig videos down below for you guys so you can just pick and choose which one you want to go through. But I, I definitely think that you should watch all three of them. I think it's about three of them. All three of them. Um, so you could just grasp everything that I'm saying because you know different method calls for different methods <laughs> so yeah so at this point I'm gonna just cut the string and then we just gonna sew her on together on the sewing machine and we're gonna cut off the excess material underneath the lace
so the reason why I like the way that I make my wigs is because like say you have a wig right and you your lace tears or your your wig is going bald or it's something like that or it's just time to replace it you can easily just cut that lace closure out and just put a new one in because we did like an anchor stitch to make it closed in so we sewn that closure right on the last track so it's easier for you to cut that off than having to remake an entire wig so your wig in so yeah like I just like being able to have that option and I have that option with my closures as well but this is the wig she is very silky and long um, and she's glueless how I like her <laughs> okay so if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them down the, below in the um, comment area I will be down there answering all the questions okay thank you for hair and beauty for sending me this hair and I will be back with some more videos hey